So let's look at a simple example. We have a core router, uh, you know, border router, core router, and uh, your central switch for the servers in your central location. This is where you're running your cable from your core location to, and we're going to run it to four different buildings. You can see the total uh, distance here is 14. 1,500 meters or 1.4 kilometers, and you can see it's going to uh, require eight optical interfaces. It requires an optical interface in the core router, and it requires an optical interface in the remote building. So let's just do a really quick look at what would it cost, and again, this doesn't include the cost of the router or switches that support this, these speeds. It's looking only at the cost of the optical interface and the fiber itself. So if we built that network with OM1, it's 1.4 kilometers times the per kilometer cost of 4921. So we get you know 1.4 times 4921 is 6889. Now for the optics, if you remember with the gigabit optics, you can go on OM1 fiber 275 meters. So we can use one of those links, the one that is 200 meters, I can use the cheaper optical interface, the $6 optical interface rather than the $9 optical interface, but only for that one link, that 200 meter link. The rest of them I have to buy the more expensive optical interface at $9 each, I need to buy six of those. So you add that up, two times six plus uh, six times nine, and then uh, you'll get the total cost of $69.55. Doing the same for OM2, we note that OM2 will support gigabit for 500 meters, which is the farthest uh, any of these buildings are, so we can use the less expensive optics. So if we had OM1, it's gonna cost us $66 for the optics. If it's OM2, we only need eight of the less expensive, so $48. And the fiber cable itself is cheaper, so 1.4 times the, the cost per kilometer, and you come up with, you know, about five grand. Doing a similar with OM3 and OM4, you can see the cost of the optics is totally dwarfed, dwarfed by the cost of the fiber cable. So OM4, we're going to spend $12,500 on the cable, but only 50 bucks on the optics. And then finally for OS2, even though it requires all of the more expensive interfaces, the cost of the fiber is so much cheaper. It's $1,300, and you add the cost of the more expensive optical interfaces, you get installed system much, much, much less cost than any other choice. If we move to 10 gig, so if we move to 10 gig, Note that some of these fiber types won't support 10 gig over the required distances, right? So OM1, OM2, and OM3 can't build this network because OM1 and OM2 won't do 10 gig farther than 220 meters. OM3 won't do 10 gig farther than 300 meters. So if you installed that fiber uh, and were trying to build that type of fiber and tried to build this network, you couldn't actually do this. OM4 will absolutely do this. It takes eight of the less expensive interfaces at $144. So you can still see, you know, it's around $13,000 for the optics and for the uh, fiber cable. Again, not including the cost of the switch or the router. With single mode fiber, again, since the cost of the fiber is so much less, even though the optical interfaces cost more, the installed system cost is very, very uh, much better than using OM4 fiber. And then if we move on and just take a look at 100 gig, you can see that none of the multi-mode uh, fiber cable types, none of the OM fiber types will support 100 gig over any of the required distances. Single mode absolutely will. Now here, the single mode interfaces are dramatically more expensive. They're six times more than the multi-mode interface for 100 gig, but at least you can build the network. Here we have the optics uh, starting to dominate the cost. So, you know, it's the only thing that will work.